Hey, welcome back to me being cheap. And today we are going to talk about toilet paper. Ways to save on toilet paper, ways to avoid toilet paper, toilet paper alternatives, what have you. So I know this could be a touchy subject, but um, if you are a human, um, you probably go to the bathroom several times a day. Um, you may be urinating, you may be defecating, um, what have you, but chances are um, you have the need to clean your body um, at least once a day in some form or fashion. Um, now, one of the hardest things to do is toilet paper math. So if you look at packages, there's like one ply, two ply, jumbo rolls, mega rolls, double rolls, single rolls. There doesn't seem to be an industry standard. If there is a standard, I have not been able to figure it out. Okay, so that's one issue that makes this a very hard subject uh, to actually come up with some concrete numbers on. Uh, the other thing is that we have um, male versus female. Um, here in the US, uh, men usually stand up to go number one. So um, they probably are not using um, toilet paper unless they're like wiping up some splatter or something. Um, and then we also have differences in anatomy, uh, differences in the amount of hair on our genitals. We also have um, difference in diet, which can cause uh, cleanup to be more difficult in some cases than others. Um, we have various states of health, uh, meaning, you know, if you've got a urinary tract infection, maybe you're going to the bathroom more often, or if you've got a bad case of diarrhea, you're going more often. So, um, one of the things that you can do is, um, if you want to save money, is uh, kick it down a couple notches on the quality of toilet paper until your family complains and then move it up a notch. So, uh, for example, um, I was shopping at our local grocery store and I tried their store brand uh, because it was a little bit cheaper than uh, the brand that we are used to and um, the boys didn't like it. So they requested something different uh, than usual. So um, I did go back to buying that. doesn't really make a difference now because we lost our store. So we're back to the usual brand anyway. Um, there are all kinds of tips and tricks. I don't know if any of these have any merit to them. Like some people take that two ply and pull it apart and roll it up and make two separate rolls. That's a lot of time. And to me, it seems like, well, it's not twice as thick now. So we're just going to use, you know, twice as much. So I don't know that that would work. Um, so there's also some videos out there on strategic folding of your toilet paper. And I suppose that would work. Um, I think probably in general, most of us just grab a wad, you know, sufficient enough to cover the hand to avoid any poke through, any moisture, anything like that. Um, I think if you took the time um, and did the strategic folding, that would probably work. Um, but that has to be a learned activity and it has to be a conscious effort. So I think maybe if you start off with kids when they're young and you teach them that and it kind of becomes ingrained, that would work. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about some alternatives. So, um, so of course the first alternative for saving some money is buy a cheaper brand. However, that brand may not be as good. And so then you're going through more of it. So I don't, I don't know, you know, a lot of it depends on what are you used to, you know, it's, I don't know. And the bottom line is, is you've got to get clean somehow. So there are alternative ways of getting clean. So I'm here in the United States and most everybody here uses toilet paper. Now I can say that I have traveled to a lot of places that don't use toilet paper and, um, there's actually some places where the plumbing system can't handle the paper. So uh, most places, um, research that I've done suggests that only about 25% of the world uses toilet paper. Now, I've also seen some research talking about the number of trees that are involved and the amount of water required to make toilet paper. Um, not to mention chemicals. Now, not all chemicals are bad. Um, 
you know, I guess if, if you're getting technical, water is a chemical. I mean, it's made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Um, we may be stretching things there. Not all chemicals are bad, but not all chemicals are good. So you've got a large surface area of mucous membrane. You're applying something that's been manufactured that may or may not have chemicals to it multiple times a day you get the picture. So there are some other alternatives that I'd like to talk to you about. Okay, so um, in the U.S. we have the standard, um, what people refer to as a western toilet, which is basically like a chair and you use it in a seated fashion. And that is actually not the best position for elimination. Um, you can Google this on your own. Uh, but the the preferred preferred position for elimination is actually a squat, um, and that's for when you had to go number two or when you had to defecate. Um, it actually straightens the colon out and basically gives it a, a straight shot. So, in other countries where you squat to go to the bathroom, there's um, far less incidence of things like constipation, hemorrhoids, um, you name it. Um, but you know, some of that's also related to diet and activity levels. So, I mean, it's it's not just one thing. But where I'm going with this is when you squat down, your colon is straightened out. Um, so it's more of a clean shot, no pun intended. But also, if you think about it, your little butt cheeks are opened up more. So if you're going number two, um, and if you're squatted and your butt cheeks are opened up more, there's less area that you have to clean. There's less of a mess. So just throwing that out there. So I'm not suggesting that we all like go out in our yard uh, and take a dump or anything like that. Um, but there is something for sale that's called a squatty potty. And uh, that's actually to improve colon health, make elimination a little bit easier. And it's actually a stool that uh, fits like along the base of um, the toilet like this, uh, but it actually gives you a little platform in which your feet can rest and you're actually more in a squatting position. You don't have to buy that. Um, you could use a stack of old phone books. Um, you could use, you know, just a regular stool or something like that, but it's something to get you more in the squatting position. Um, now, speaking of phone books, it wasn't too long ago um, that many Americans um, did not have indoor plumbing and uh, many were poor and didn't have things to, to clean themselves with. So phone books, uh, Sears and Roebuck catalog, um, these things were all pretty common to use. Um, and of course, you know, they didn't cost anything and you were recycling in your own way. Uh, my father-in-law said that when he was little, they had an outhouse and they actually used corn cobs uh, to clean themselves with. And they had it like a large container that the corn cobs were in. And um, you would use the corn cob and then open the door and you could chuck it outside. They get rained on a couple times and then they were reusable. So, um, you know, in, in one way, that's, that's one way you could do it. Um, I suppose you could drop the corn cob down the hole if you had an endless supply of corn cobs. Um, you know, that would work. So, humans have gotten pretty creative through the years of ways to clean. Um, but there is there are some other ways. Uh, many countries use what's called a bidet. And um, if you don't know what that is, that's like a, a little jet of water um, that comes out of a nozzle. And um, some of them spray just the behind area. And then some of them uh, will spray in the front for the females as well. Now, these used to be a separate fixture um, that was like right next to the toilet. So you would do your business um, in the toilet and then you would get up to clean yourself on the bidet. Uh, so two separate fixtures. Now, um, in recent years, they have developed um, other ways and they have things that are incorporated actually into the toilet seat where you have the device, the little nozzle that comes out and, and squirts water. Um, when my kids were little, I used cloth diapers on them, and I actually had installed a sink sprayer um, into the fresh water line of the toilet. And um, so I would use that little sink sprayer to wash out the diapers before I put them in the diaper pail. 
And that also had some other benefits such as like, you know, if the kids got sick and you're washing out the sheets or, you know, they, they threw up on their clothes or what have you, you could wash them out, you know, before you put them in the laundry. Um, and then you could also use it as a bidet if you wanted to. The only problem with that is that's cold water. And I know a lot of people are accustomed to using cold water um, as a bidet, but I never really could get used to it. So um, there are um, other options. Um, you can use, um, it's like a little squirt bottle. Um, they give it to you when you have a baby. It's called a peri bottle, but if you don't have a peri bottle, you can also use um, like a sports bottle, just a squirt bottle with a little squirt nozzle on the end. And a lot of times they actually give those away for free. 